tengo planes para esta noche. Sí, mamá. Te vas a enterar mañana. No. Yo también te quiero, ma. Yeah, about time, Holmes. What's new with Senora Wells? Uh, you know, she's worried about me. <laughs> Whatever. Can't help herself, you know? Checking to see if I'm not rotting in some dumpster, like most of the Wells boys. It's really starting to wear on me. The more I tell her everything's okay, the more I feel like I'm straight up lying. But that's done after tomorrow. After life, here we come, baby. <laughs> yeah! We're only here because Dex is pulling the strings. Doubt that puts us in the same league as them. Oh, well, we are. They just don't know it yet. Ready to get your cherry popped? <laughs> yeah, come on! Place used to be a morgue. You believe that? Who would have thunk? I know, right? Way before our time, that. When proper burials were still a thing. And who might you clowns be? Name's V. This is Jackie Wells. Oh. Is that supposed to sound familiar? It will soon. We're here to see Dex. Yo, Dex. Got two live ones saying they're here to see you. Yeah? All right, then. Says he needs a second or two. Go get yourselves drinks or something. Way ahead of you, viejo. This is it. The heart of Night City. That's it right there. Beating. Hear it? Can you imagine? Susan Forrest, Boa Boa, maybe even Morgan Blackhand. All sat on those stools. Fell asleep on that same bar. Looks like we're up. There? That's Rogue. Best fixer in all of Night City. Thought Dex was the best. <laughs> Rogue was lining up jobs when Dex was still shitting in diapers. <laughs> Place belongs to her. What can I get you? You order. Two tequila old fashions with a splash of cerveza and a chili garnish. Duo of Johnny Silverhands coming up. Right on, chica. Somebody did their homework. Looks like the dog ate mine. Age-old tradition. Drinks are named after our regulars. Say I wanted a drink named after me. What would I have to do? Snuff it. Mind-blowingly spectacular fashion. Mid up would be best. Uh, what a beautiful tradition. Tonight's city. And the afterlife. Ha <laughs> ha! Moment to shine, kiddo. Good luck. Let's take this piece of wonder tech for a whirl. You're a man of little faith. See? We're rich. Now fire her up and call me when you're underway. I'll tell you where to go. Hmm. Looks like this will be a cool breeze. Get the fuck out. <laughs> okay. Easy. Nothing personal, Gopa. Just biz. Rayfield's mine. What, man? Never heard of Thieves' Honor. Finders keepers, I was first. Listen, only one of two ways to do this. Friendly or fucked up. Either way, the ending's the same. I'm taking the car. What? What are you doing? Can you got us? NCPD, drop your weapons! You're 
under arrest. Head where I can see him. Nice and slow. Jackie Wells, my old pal from the hood. See you haven't grown an ounce wiser. Hey, <clears throat> Detective Stintz. Been a while, huh? Inspector Stintz. <sighs> Same shit. Speaking of, your mug's familiar too. Yeah? You ain't to me. Left for Atlanta, looking for a slice of happiness. Guess you didn't find it. I've always maintained it's the same for all you termites in Haywood. Born here, live here, die here. Looks like I was right. You know, fuck all about me. Truth hurts, huh? Just watch your tone. I'm not a patient man. Hey, come on, Stintz. Give us a break, huh? You lock us up, they'll just jerk off till trial. And then what? Worst case, we get some months. Hell, standing room only nowadays in El Bote. So, I'd probably be out early. Are these the thieves? Fuck Ordinary you, street trash. Got him in custody, Mr. Fujioka. We'll be taking him now. It's a waste of effort. I have no time to testify or play it on an investigation. Suggesting we let them go, sir? I suggest you toss them in the sea. Cuff legs broken so this trash doesn't float. You heard him. <sighs> Fuck. Designated landing site has been detected at the destination. Find a spot close to the bar, as close as you can. Fuck procedures. Initiating landing sequence based on new parameters. Problem, Psycho Suit. This look like a landing pad to you. Could have fucking crushed us. <laughs> okay, no, no, hey, we, we ain't looking for no beef with you. <laughs> oh, Some trouble once in. Keep an eye on the AV for me, will you? I don't get paid to do that. I wasn't asking. I'm not a scratch on it when I get back. Welcome to Lizzie's. Tell me what's got your shorts in a knot. It's good to see you too, Jack. How you been?
I know where I'm gonna strike before I do it. Typical. Knew I'd say that. You're for a fight. Which one of you's my guy? Me. Wasn't expecting a tag team, but whatever, I guess. So, who do I got first? No, no. You don't get it. That body and this one. I'm the same person. So, what? I'm seeing double? I used to be twins, which you could probably guess. The twins had a close bond. They wanted to be closer, stronger. So they installed neural oscillation sinks. And now they're, well, me. One, one person, person two, bodies. two bodies. My bodies do everything together. Everything. Fine, but we're raising the stakes. Fair. See no problem with that. So, can, can we, we get, get started? started? Show me what you got. this I'll do this. Implantations against my beliefs. Please. I do not want them. Calm down. It's over now. I'm not with them. Electric coupling module. You said it was nothing serious when I came in. You said you were sure. Guess I was wrong. Can always look for another shop where they won't ask a lone nomad why he's hugging the border. That's fine. Step aside. What? Got any idea what to do? <clears throat> hmm. Huh. 
I'm gonna bypass the couple and rig a hot water. Compressor will run on and on. Put C's out. Did anyone ask your opinion? Figure something else out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Antenna on this heap don't seem like it packs a punch. Not liable to hear much. You don't say. Hey, Mike. Didn't know you had a customer. Uh, rolled in a few hours past. I, I, I thought. He'd at least called in. Don't you swear to mine. We're gonna hash it out. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit? To tell him what's brought you here. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. No need to worry. I won't be staying long. Didn't answer my question now, did you? Uh, as an example, if you choose the street kid life path, you have lived most of your time in Night City. You know the streets, you know the gangs, you know the slang, you kind of know what's going on in the, let's say, lower life aspects of the city, which can of course give you lots of good opportunities also later on in the game. Because nomads that roam the deserts around Night City that we call the Badlands actually value their family above anything. But for one reason or another, you actually left that family behind. And now the beginning of the game for you will actually be how to get into Night City and how to make a new life there. And that basically means that you're not at home in the streets of Night City or in the deserts of the Badlands, but actually inside a boardroom because you rose the corporate ladder of the Arasaka Corporation, which basically gives you the ability to sometimes, you know, read between the lines, read people when they're trying to do business to the end. And of course, you know, we have these life paths affecting the beginning of the game, but we wanted to make it so you have your life path opportunities throughout the whole game until the, the game is over. And as an example, we do that by giving you additional options in dialogue. For example, if you actually do play the Nomad life path at the start and you are in the Badlands, you can even see Night City on the horizon. And we want to give you the option later in the game, if you want, you can just take your car and drive out of the city. You can go there whenever you want. Thing is, you might not want to because the Badlands can be a pretty dangerous place at first because time has not been very kind to the Badlands. There have been many wars in the past, there's global warming, so most people that do live out there don't really have another choice about it or are nomads that love this life and are all about it and are very battle-hardened. We see giving his business card to Street Kid V in the video. Who is this man? Fixer then finds people who can solve that problem. And these people are people like you, V, cyberpunks. Fixers are very territorial, so Padre specifically works from Haywood, which is where you as a street kid grew up in, so you already know him. You might have already seen another one of our fixers, who is called Dexter Deshawn, and he works in a different part of the city. Power weapons are the most similar to contemporary weapons. One thing they can do, which normal weapons cannot, is ricochet bullets off of surfaces. So you can hit somebody hiding behind cover or hiding behind a wall. Now tech weapons, on the other hand, use electromagnetic power to propel a fully metal projectile to extreme velocities. What that allows them to do is to punch through cover or punch through walls to hit somebody who's not even aware that you're there. Smart weapons use guided missile technology to actually track targets in real time. So you can hit somebody who's dodging, running away from you, or you can hit somebody who's hiding behind cover. What the player will experience is that V changes from a small-time mercenary to a legend in the world of Night City. V becomes more and more proficient in using weapons as the game progresses. So they will see that reload times become shorter, uh, the accuracy of your weapons grows, uh, you will have faster aiming time, you will move faster with your weapons, everything becomes more in your control and that gives you more opportunities. To Plan simple, do nothing odd, don't get creative, 
You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. And remember, everything on full blast. They'll spot us extra for a wicked adrenaline high. Okay, on you go. Down, everybody! On the ground! I wanna see you kissing the flooring! Muddy! Now, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, yeah, hey, I, I, I... Now! Before I blow your fucking head off! Ah! Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was too much. Felt. I could feel the guy's pain, his dress, his hope. Hope wrapped up in something else. Mm hmm. Probably took a booster just before. You'll be fine. Got everything set up? Let's switch over to editing mode. I'll sever the link to the BD Roller's sensory array. You'll be able to look around freely. Whole scene's yours. Full cam control in analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. So, analysis mode, you control playback can even pause when you feel the need. Then you use the editor console to unpause. Try it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. Dream as hell, right? Well, that's not all. You can speed things up or rewind, whatever you like. Give it a try. Rewind. Roll it back to the top. Can I, can I? All good, neat. Now try fast forwarding a bit. Plan simple. Do nothing on the creative. You go in, set cash. Yeah. Okay. You can also reset the recording. That'll take you right back to the beginning. Try it. Now for some fun. This here's why you came in the first place. In analysis mode, you get to view and even scan details of the enviro recorded by the BD roller. Focus on the heat, the gun this gonk gets from his buddy at the beginning. Now scan it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. Okay, right here. Excellent. Let's move on. Now heads up. In analysis mode, you can ferret out background noise and conversations if the roller got close enough. This tech records everything. Every little detail. Even the sights and sounds the roller was never aware of. To see the sources of the recorded sensory signals, switch to the audio layer in the editor. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, good. Now you should see several sound signatures in the store. Choose one and hone in on it. Pack of six, case of brosif, and a couple of zappers. Okay. We have a deal today on two flavors. Cuddy and uh, surf and Everybody! On the so, any thoughts? Unbelievable. Seriously. Like what's happening right next to me. Yeah, it's how BD recording implants work. They pick up everything, all the elements in the background. Then an editor tweaks them. Make some pop. Keep playing with the sound, explore it a bit. We'll move on when you get bored. Now, I wanna see you kissing the flooring! Muddy! Never. Sometimes you can analyze extra layers in the raw. Stuff the roller's cyberware picked up. Like what? Ev's got Kiroshi optics that grab infrared. Meaning you should be able to grab heat signatures from her recording. Huh. <laughs> Hello nice. Scanning works on peeps, too. Walk up to the wounded chick. Try scanning her. All right, next thing. Scroll forward to the part where our artist gets a lead injection. 
Or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, get it, now! Fucking head off! See that? They shot him and he never saw it coming. But you will. Here it comes. My favorite part of the game. See the blinking thing over the entrance? Surveillance cam. Must have caught our shooter. You'll see in a sec. Cam feeds to the screen behind the clerk. Roll back to where the screen's in the kid's field of vision, then scan it. His own chumba shot him. Probably planned to all along. Must have got a nice slice of cred on the black market for a BD like this. BD freaks are ready to pay a preem for a real flatline. Anyway, if you've seen enough, you can exit. Yeah, it's impressive, right? It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the log. We know you've been waiting to, so please don't be jealous, because we got to play it. Like, for four hours. It was awesome. We know the wait can be agonizing, so maybe we can just take the edge off a little bit by telling you about the first few hours of the game, and we'll keep the spoilers as minimal as we can. CD Projekt Red has repeatedly touted how Cyberpunk 2077 will present you with meaningful choices, so we were curious about how that would measure up in the game itself. If the first few hours are an indication, CDPR ain't lying. From the very beginning, you're presented with an incredible range of meaningful decisions. Naturally, character creation will have far-reaching effects on your character's looks and playstyle. Before you start exploring Night City, you're presented with another huge choice, your origin story. Now, this isn't something that happens in a menu, you're actually going to play it. You can pick from three backgrounds. Hey, if we're not making decisions based on 80s sci-fi, then we're not doing it right, you know? The demo opens up with some simple car trouble before the local sheriff waddles in to hassle us. What kind of cyberpunks would we be if we didn't totally ignore authority figures, right? No need to worry. I won't be staying long. Didn't answer my question now, did you? We tell Dad to cram it and get to work. Apparently, someone wants something smuggled into Night City. The only problem is Night City is past the northern Southern California border, so we're going to have to smuggle it through the Border Patrol. Luckily, we just happen to be a scrappy, nameless nomad who will do just about anything for a few Euro dollars. But to successfully get the package across the border, you'll need help. From there, we meet up with Jackie Wells, who you might remember from some previously shared gameplay demos of Cyberpunk 2077. One small Border Patrol bribe later, and we get the contraband safely through the checkpoint, only apparently the bribe was too small. Stop your vehicle immediately. Let's get out of here. On it. After a few very impressive explosions, we find a place to lie low with Jackie until the heat blows over. Not to mention, pop the top on that contraband to find out what's inside. What, you want us to spoil it? No way! There is honor yet among cyberpunks. But this, as they say, is the start of a beautiful friendship between V and Jackie. From there, you team up to pursue a life of action and glory in Night City. But again, we only played that entire sequence because we chose to start as a nomad. The other two origins are wildly different though they do establish the same groundwork to start the game. As a street kid, you meet Jackie while boosting a car before getting busted by the cops. As a corpo, Jackie is your street contact until you get betrayed by a co-worker and burnt by your own company. These origin stories are more than just three unique intros to the game. We're told V's origin will echo throughout the entire game's story, with specific dialogue options and story paths opening based on the origin you choose. The setup sounds kind of like 2009's Dragon Age Origins, only like with more guns and neon. Could have crushed us. Oh, okay, no, no, hey, we, we ain't looking for no beef with you. Once you finish your origin story, you move right into the E3 2018 demo. You know where you and Jackie must bust into that den of scavengers and save the lady in the ice bath. 
Our gameplay and story beats played out largely as they did back then, with a ton of small differences that would honestly take too long to completely catalog. Rather than recap all of those events, let's focus on new gameplay elements that we haven't seen before. The biggest one is Brain Dance, which, yeah, it's as cool as it sounds. Brain Dance is full immersive VR, allowing you to experience the sights, sounds, smells, even the feelings of someone else. It's the dominant form of entertainment in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, allowing you to walk the red carpet as a celebrity, perform to a stadium full of cheering fans, and some things that venture into rated M territory. While most of Night City curls up with the latest brain dance, or BD, after a day of work, V can use it to uncover important information. As the subject with the BD recording implant moves through recorded scene, you're able to fly around in 3D space and scrub through all the data the implant picks up. Full cam control and analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. If you've played Tacoma, available on Xbox Game Pass, you're getting the right idea. By alternating between visible, audio, and infrared bands, you can discover clues and information that will help you do whatever it is you're trying to do. In practice, this means you can use Brain Dance to scout out targets in advance, noting the location of alarms, cameras, and guards. Or not. In our demo, we could have completely skipped the Brain Dance and moved ahead without all the information we gained. Again, it's down to player choice either way. Apart from that, there are a million tiny ways that our choices in dialogue and character build affected the way we played. For example, we built our character to be a frail, techie hacker man, great with computers, but maybe not the beefiest boy on the playground. And yeah, once the bullets started flying, we hit the deck pretty quick. You will die fast if you're not built to take damage. You'll die fast if you can't take damage. Yeah, that's some real shoot it until it dies logic, huh? Well, it sounds obvious, but a low HP pool has serious implications beyond just getting flatlined. Dialogue options directly impact the outcome of conversations, to the point where the same chat can either end a conversation with a friendly wave or a bullet depending on what you say. We tried to play it tough with the Maelstrom gang a few times and we got a handful of game over screens as a result. It became clear that we were playing outside of our character build and had to play to our strengths instead, misdirection, stealth, and subterfuge. Rather than drawing guns at the first sign of trouble like a good video game protagonist, we started de-escalating in conversations. Telling people what they wanted to hear or throwing around some money to calm the waters ended up being far more effective than pretending to be a tough guy. And just like that, our dialogue options started to sync up with our character build. Not only was our hacker man geared towards stealth, but had to leverage social nuance to stay alive. Who knew an RPG might have you, I don't know, play your role? What a concept! Finally, we'd like to comment on an aspect of the game that doesn't revolve around player choice, but is noteworthy nonetheless. We came to Night City expecting a den of urban decay, packed with human vice and suffering. Even CD Projekt Red's previous series, The Witcher, takes place in a cruel world that often leads to stories of human and inhuman viciousness. So it's natural to expect something similar in Cyberpunk 2077. Even the trailer says, 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. But despite that, there's an unexpected streak of human warmth and levity in the game. From the big brother we always wanted in Jackie, to the calming bedside manner of Victor the Ripper Doc, the denizens of Night City are just as quirky and funny as they can be mean and aggressive. This is pointless. I know where I'm gonna strike before I do it. Typical. Knew I'd say that. Here for a fight. Which one of you's my guy? Me. After a few hours with Cyberpunk 2077, we get the sense that this is a world where humanity has merged with technology, rather than a world where humanity has been erased by it. Tonight City. And the afterlife. <laughs> Which, to be honest, is completely unexpected. We came to Cyberpunk wanting to see if it would deliver a deep RPG that truly rewards player choice, and it looks like it does. We didn't expect to come away so charmed by the world and its characters. Because of this, we can't wait to spend more time in Night City. Unfortunately, wait we must. Cyberpunk 2077 releases on November 19th. And don't forget, 
via the magic of smart delivery when CD Projekt Red delivers an Xbox Series X optimized version of Cyberpunk 2077, you'll automatically get upgraded once it's available at no additional cost. Good to see you too, Jack. How you been? We have here. Grew up in Haywood. Whole street was my family. Neighbors helped each other out. Thought nothing of it. I am pleased to see you have not forgotten your roots. Born here, live here, die here. Childhood memories. Hopping buildings. Running away from badges. Iron tasted blood from a split lip. Motherfucker. Got everybody fighting for a slice of the street. Get the fuck out of Vista. If you keep getting jumped, you find some stronger tubers. Do you want to spend the rest of your days blasting scabs? Or become a legend overnight? We have arrived. The Major. Ready to get your cherry bobbed? Yeah, come on! Childhood, I see. Racing my bobber for the first time through the hills. <laughs> oh, and uh, first kiss in the middle of a synth cornfield. We nomads choose who to make our family. A choice forges strong bonds and a higher duty that stands solid as an old oak. My family's in pieces. That's why I'm headed for Night City. Makes you an outcast among outcasts. Miss this, you know? Camaraderie. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. You know what I always liked about nomads? Your taste, no, hunger for freedom. Not easy to come by in Night City. Corpse got their grubby claws and everything. have those reports you asked for. They were supposed to be ready yesterday. The world's going to tear us apart when the word gets around. The world's never going to find out. If I go down, you're going down with me. No, I'm not fucking joking. This isn't a request, V. But no way you're fucked, right? You're the one who fixes other people's shit. If you work in our socket counter intel, you're always fucked. Today, they got you to zero somebody. Tomorrow, they'll get somebody else to zero you. What's the rules, Jack? You wanna be top? Gotta have some skin in the game. Yeah, but you're not on top. It's a borough where Asaka is. And you're the pendejo who keeps him there. Work for yourself, live for yourself. That's the only way. Hey v, I have a job for you. A client of mine is making an arms deal. He needs protection. It could get hot, very hot. The gun dealers on Maelstrom. Alas, nothing ever transpires as planned with them. You better gear up for this.
Sovi, are you willing? Yeah, I'm in. Let's do this. Okay. What now? Barry. Johnny. Barry. On a plongé. Where are we? Our BBS. Data Fortress. Bridge to the deep net. Beyond there are no borders. Beyond the black wall. Welcome to the Cyberpunk 2077 2019 Deep Dive video. In last year's gameplay reveal, we showed you our vision for the world of Cyberpunk 2077, its quests, and visual design. This year, we'd like to give you a peek at some of the playstyles you'll be able to adopt as your character progresses through the story. Here goes nothing. You're about to see sequences embodying two distinct approaches to playing Cyberpunk. We'll show you a strong solo build, that is, a character who focuses on employing blunt force and taking instant action. And a Netrunner build, a playstyle taking frequent advantage of stealth tactics, hacking, and battlefield control achieved using malicious software. Additionally, you'll learn more about Pacifica, one of the game's districts. Two gangs, the Animals and the Voodoo Boys. And you'll see glimpses of Johnny Silverhand, the digital construct who haunts our main character, V. A word of caution. Given that the video covers a section of the game deep into the main storyline, we have edited the footage to contain as few spoilers as possible. Be aware that the gameplay as presented does reveal characters and locations you'll see while playing the game's main story arc. So watch at your own discretion. Where are we headed? This way. In this video, you'll experience a segment of a quest from the middle of the game. We're currently in Pacifica, one of Night City's six unique districts. No Pacifica, well. Nah. You guys aren't exactly great at rolling out the welcome mat for outsiders. It was designed to be a tourist hotspot within the city. As you can see, this didn't pan out. When uncertainty struck the global economy, investors pulled their funding, leaving most establishments unfinished. It's one of those places where expectations and reality collided, resulting in a heap of disappointment. Ongoing gang wars plague this part of the city. Outsiders don't come here if they don't have to. Even by Night City's standards, it's dangerous to those unfamiliar with it. Taking a casual stroll here would not be a good idea. A fast motorbike or armor-plated car would be the safer option. But places like this have their advantages. If you're in need of rare goods or illegal cyberware, Pacifica's bustling local markets are a good place to start your search. The Grand Imperial Mall is a whole other story. It was one of the last developments in Pacifica to lose its funding. Until recently, it stood vacant, but now a gang called the Animals has moved in for reasons unknown. Something's not going right for the 
big guy up top. And that's what we need to learn in order to earn the trust of the voodoo boys, the animal's rivals. What the hell? Could fucking tell me what you plan to do first. You take job. You do what I say. So you jack in. Now. Of the many gangs in Cyberpunk 2077, the Voodoo Boys are the most skilled at using the net. I've now seen the Voodoo Agwe on Sevenet. Why? What for? You are my vessel now. Through Agwe, I see what you see, hear what you hear. This mysterious gang of highly skilled netrunners has close ties to the local Haitian community. You are the... We have been waiting. Haitians settled in Pacifica in the 2060s after natural disasters struck their island and forced them to emigrate en masse. The Voodoo Boys gang formed around this same time, though at a smaller scale. Now the gang effectively rules Pacifica. The Voodoo Boys don't usually work with outsiders. Lucky for us, it seems they're prepared to make an exception this time. Mr. Han sent me. He said you got murk work needs doing. Still, to earn their trust, we need to prove our worth. Placide, one of the Voodoo Boys higher-ups, has offered us a mission. We need to infiltrate the Grand Imperial Mall, currently occupied by the Voodoo Boys' deadly enemy, a gang called the Animals. 20, 35, 07. Three seconds before, poof, the camionette. We try to learn where the camionette come from. The Animals are not your normal gang. Their presence in Pacifica is suspicious. They value might above all else and wear melee combat implants to raise their prowess in combat. Their beverage of choice is juice, a potent strength and speed enhancing concoction. As sought after bouncers, they're usually dispersed throughout town. As skilled street level business types, they've cornered the market in illegal substances and underground live or die prize fights. When they converge in one spot, it's for something big. It's then they appoint the fastest and strongest among them as their ad hoc leader. In this case, it's a woman named Sasquatch. Said you wanted my bet. No. As far as I remember, you said no bone brain buffaloes on steroids. I'm afraid that's the cost of doing biz. This is the tech Placide was talking about. It seems non-standard for the animals. And this is where we come in. Getting to the van won't be easy, but we're more than qualified for the job, which we can complete in one of many ways. The character creation in Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind you'd expect from a full-fledged RPG. You start by choosing your past, important because this unlocks special options at important story junctures. You also fully customize your character using a deep customization system that spans not only your look and style, but also your abilities. Cyberpunk 2077 does not feature fixed classes. Instead, it has a fluid class system that allows players to mix and match a wide range of abilities to suit their playstyles. You can create a strong solo character, a skilled netrunner, or any other hybrid class you can imagine. Let's see how a solo playstyle in Cyberpunk 2077 might work. Solos prefer a direct approach. They use guns and might to get things done. So let's wreak some havoc. With our enhanced strength, we can strip this turret of its weapon to give the animals a taste of their own medicine. This is how a player investing in solo abilities might live out their Terminator power fantasy. Enhanced strength lets us force open doors. or grab enemies to use as human shields. We also gain access to powerful melee combat cyberware. So even someone as fast and strong as Sasquatch, the leader of this group of animals, is not impossible to beat for a solo. But Sasquatch has a different game plan. She's out to jack in and hack us. Let's see how this plays out. Ready for some fun? Morty. Proceed. What's going on? It's 
our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your cyberpunk, your rules. If you'd rather sneak around, hide, and strike from the shadows, no problem. Just develop your net running skills to get around obstacles or hack into enemy tech to have it do the dirty work for you. Net running abilities mean hacking skills that let us use our cyber deck to breach access points. For this, we fill the buffer of our cyber deck with a string of instructions represented by these letters and numbers. Matching the instructions for basic access grants us control of devices connected to this network. The more instructions we match, the more control we gain over elements in the network. We can hack our way through in numerous ways. A quick hack may grant us control of the security camera. Another one should let us tweak the difficulty of the training bot to create a distraction. With our nanowire, we can even hack this guy's implants from a distance. In this world, almost everything is connected to a local network. And that means it can be hacked. Ours is a wolf. Which brings us back to cyberspace. You don't get to do anything in the net unnoticed. There's always someone watching. It could be Corpos, or even worse, it could be Netwatch. And that is exactly the case here. Who is they? Netwatch. They always have to fuck us. Netwatch and the Voodoo Boys are like fire and ice. The first of these wants to maintain the old order and protect people from AI anarchy originating from beyond the Black Wall. The Voodoo Boys want to establish contact with the free AIs. They believe this will enable their boundless expansion on the net and grant them the upper hand over Netwatch. Netwatch sees this as the end of the world. Both are right. Whoa, hey. How you deal with the Netwatch agent is entirely up to you. Do we side with the gang? Choosing to be on Netwatch's bad side is never wise. But can we really trust the Voodoo Boys? You set me up! As you can see, we have many possible options. But in each case, we take a risk. I think I'll just stick to my plan. In the world of cyberpunk, few things go as planned. And that was just a glimpse of how complex the branching storyline in Cyberpunk 2077 can get. Every decision you make will have consequences. Your choices will shape how the world reacts to you and affect your relationships with those around you. One of those relationships is special. Ever heard of Johnny Silverhand? A rebel rocker boy who will be your companion throughout your adventure in Night City? Come on, really think they give a rat's dick how you look? Like everyone in Cyberpunk 2077, he has his own agenda. You'll decide if he'll be your ally or your enemy. And that chip in your head, the one thanks to which Johnny lives inside your mind. Well, that's a story for another time. <laughs> Okay, there's Jack. Fucking finally. Buckle up. Shit's happening. What's up, Jack? Dexter Deshaun. Huh? So familiar? They wants to talk to you. One of Night City's top fixers, eh? Okay, you see that caddy? Need to walk on over there and get us a job, I know. Fine, I'll meet him. Talk. I'll be in Senior Rippers. 
Good news to me. Good luck, V. It turns out we've caught the attention of one of Night City's biggest players, Dexter Deshawn, a fixer, a person who gets things done. He wants to meet up and discuss a job. Get in. Let's see what he has for us. Yo, Miss V, a pleasure. Let's roll. Scanning the serious job just now. Playing gargantuan compared to smashing up a scab horn. You interested? Interested, sure. Tell me more. Well, glad to hear it. Before we can start in on this, though, I need to be sure. Sure you all right. All right. And the nature of this test? Slot in the show. See, got a classic tale for you. Psycho gang, just doing his thing, jumped a corp convoy, got away with gear. Now I need me that little combat buy. They call it the flathead. Of course, I got the eddies to buy it, but me and the Maelstrom boys ain't the best of friends. No flow to our convo, see? Who's the woman? Corporal agent. She's on the hunt for the dogs who sold the Gangoon's info on the convoy. Got herself a prisoner. Her chief suspect, most likely. Going on 20 hours since the convoy was jumped and she still don't have no guilty body. Gotta be desperate by now. Be wise to think how you could use that. Got any questions for me? We're on it all, I think. Time I got to work. Beautiful. Here's hoping my inkling checks out. So, see you at the afterlife soon as the job's done. Do good, and this will be the start of a beautiful friendship based on heaps of eddies. It seems Dexter has given us a test of sorts to see if we're worth. You're the best, Vic. Go on, kid. Show him what you can do. And once you hit the big time, don't forget where you came from. While some Ripper docks operate legally, others provide black market services. For the right price, they can even offer to install illegal military grade cyberware. Left a few minutes ago, said he'd wait outside. Well, well, Hiroshi. Mm -hmm. Well, Vig's got a soft spot for you, Heine. Come on, how about you use them fancy ass optics to scan my new wheels? Sure, but you'll have to let me take it for a spin. Hey, just watch the big job. Who's this pendejo? Hey, Hey, you got a problem? This guy looks an awful lot like one of those scavengers we took out earlier. Something tells me that wasn't no coincidence, huh? Jackie's car is a super-powered sports car running on Chew 2, the super fuel of the future. Players can explore Night City freely, in many different cars, on bikes, and in other types of fields. This does not look good. Puta madre! Grab the wheel, Jack! Oh, fuck! It looks like the scavengers from earlier are still angry. They're pulling ahead, Heine. Watch it now. Got it. All right. I 
think we got rid of him. That was intense. Ah! Shit! The fuck was that? Devils. Night City never sleeps. Danger lurks around every corner, even in daytime. Random encounters like these are an example of how your actions directly influence your open world experience. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay, Jackie. So, they're done riding our asses? Scavs? Uh, sure, maybe. Should be looking for a new spot to slice and dice, not gunning after us. But, who knows? Real messed up in there, Scavs. Saw it yourself. Many forces are fighting for control of Night City, but the mega corporations are the real showrunners. The agent we're going to meet represents Militech, one of the largest companies in the private military sector. What are we stopping? Remember the corpo off Dex's shard? Ranger, she's in the area, and we're gonna meet. Let me guess. She's in hot corporal water, desperate. Then you think you can use that? See if I can, yeah. Since Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG, preparation will be key when dealing with Night City's powerful, especially when these are corpos. Instead of just rushing in, let's assess the situation with our freshly installed Kiroshi optical scanner. There, let's take a closer look. Composite armor, car's a fucking tank. Shit. Yeah, Militech. No doubt about it. You sure you still want to meet him? Yeah, gotta do this. But don't you move a damn muscle. Not unless I start, that is. These guys are levels higher than we are. Let's try to approach them carefully. Stout. Take it you were the one to call? Yep. We wanted... You're smart, but you could blackmail me, bitch? Set conditions? Calm the hell down! What is I've this? I've got you now, asshole! You're insane! Who the fuck is this? I'll know in two seconds flat. That fucking thing ready? All set. Are you here alone? The Corpos have hacked us through our personal link and have subjected Come us on. to a kind of lie detector program. The dialogue system in Cyberpunk 2077 is fully gameplay driven. I asked if you came alone. Yep, just little old me. She's lying. Search the area. Now listen, folks, we don't need to be here all day. This piece of shit, Anthony Gilchrist, did he or another asshole at Militech leak info to you or anyone else about a convoy? It might be tempting to reach for the gun, but the consequences could be dire. To do with him Remember, or these guys are really tough. Shit. Checks out. <laughs> you got nothing on me! Nothing! Won't get away with this, you bitch! You're dead! Somebody shut him up. Take me home! Now! All right. I have no idea who you're working for or what you even want, but you better give me something solid or I will end you. I've got an offer. Oh, you are stretching. This better be fucking good. Gang goons who ripped you off? I know where to find them. They got a bot I want. Give me the funds to buy that bot. You can do what you want with the gang. I don't give a shit about the thieves. I want my mold. Credship, 50k. Just enough to buy you your bot. Thing is, Chip's gotta make it into the thieves' terminal. That's all I need. Think you can do that? Then we got a deal. Fine. I'm in. Try to fuck me in any way, and I'll be seeing you real soon. You're making a mistake! This cunt's good as dead! And she'll take you down with her! The agent gave us the money to buy the bot we need from the game. By choosing to call the Militech agent earlier, 
We have now opened up a non-violent path through this quest. Of course, we could try and keep the money, but that would mean we'd have to take the merchandise by force, which requires a lot of firepower. Looked a little fishy, you know? People tense, no signal, so I stayed put. Good thing, too. Went down about like I expected. Made a deal, and we're good to meet with Maelstrom now. Mm-hmm. Be there soon. What do you expect? Corpse don't forgive or forget. Even these Borg fucks sense that. Feel the pressure. That's why they're holed up in this shithole, praying to the almighty Trip Six. They gotta move the tech, but they can't. Cause your new best friend from the tripped out, tanked out SUV, is just begging them to try. How you wanna do this? Even now, we can choose how to approach this quest. Do we go in guns blazing, or do we try to negotiate All right. for the bomb? Plan's simple. We pay with the Corpo's cred, and get out. I don't know, but you're calling this one. For this demo, let's try oh, the more diplomatic approach. Uh, Tough shit. All we need's for them to buy it. <laughs> Don't know you. Want to talk to Royce? Main roof. I'm waiting. They get damn well prepared. All strapped with military gear. Psycho Borg scrummed out with military grade hardware worth millions. Should be the guys we're about to meet are dangerous. They are members of the Maelstrom gang and their obsession with body modification goes way beyond even this world's standards. On their path to becoming machines, they don't shy away from even the most extreme measures. Anti-personnel mine. Shrapnel's better. Hmm, my favorite. Kangoon's getting creative with their gear. It looks like they made this abandoned All Foods Meat Factory their hideout. Charming. Another one? Seriously? Maybe we should have taken him by surprise. A little late for regress like that. Got us in their sights now. Just keep moving. Stay cool. They're just trying to spook us. Remember, we've chosen to buy the tech, not steal it. Hopefully this will go yeah, fast no, and easy. This is a pretty well-guarded place. You can imagine what would have happened if we'd taken the violent path. What? Looking to buy a bot. Model MTO D12. Looks like a spider. Couch planted. Yo, Kurt. Peek around the corner, see if we got anything like that. I'll stand. Can't move on your culo. Makes you an easy target. Sit down. That really necessary, hombre? I ain't your hombre. Sit. Sit your ass down before I plant a bullet in your skull. Jack, sit down. This ain't gonna end well, but... Shit. Well, all right. Fucking bravo. Come on. Lighten up. Have a whiff. Better. Now we can talk. The bot. Need to see it. Suit yourself. Fucking tricked out, state of the art this thing. Don't even got no standard port. 
bells and whistles, though, dynamic camo armor and motor impulses rival in that of the human nervous system. Its actuators are actually pimped with titanium fiber, and it can go anywhere, literally. Watch this. Fully integrated link, too, so when the spider starts crawling up walls, dangling from ceilings, you could lose your lunch. So, what you think? Me up and let's get the fuck out of here. The buck. I'll take it. Two questions. What the fuck's going on? And who the fuck is this? Got 50 large on this crutching. And you positively reek of Militech. Dexter Deshaun sent me. Dexter Deshaun. Dreads. Gold plate. Fat old fuck! That him? <laughs> we'll pay for the bot. We'll be on our way. How much you say you had? 50k? Creds on this. Move it. Woo! Not the smoothest of deals, but it worked out in the end, right? Flathead's good gear. It'll do the trick. Whatever that trick is. Shit. Shit, shit, shit! <laughs> It turns out the cred chip we got from the Militech agent contained a virus Cut which off. fried their systems. The virus trip the Royce, their leader, is making a break for it. <laughs> Had to end this way. Before we figure out a way to leave, let's grab the splinter that controls the bot from one of these dead maelstromers. The inspection system allows us to take a closer look at the splinter. You can inspect specific items to reveal details that can help in solving quests. Okay, let's equip the splinter to our chipware store. With this done, the bot will now follow us wherever we go. All right, what else do we have here? Nice. A street modified tech shotgun. Tech weapons fire rounds that penetrate walls and other types of cover. They also have an alternate fire mode that allows you to power up shots and deal more damage. It looks like there are several ways out of this room, like those gates, for example. However, you'd have to be a skilled net runner to hack into this terminal. Luckily, our engineering skills should allow us to disassemble that maintenance panel so we can get through the door. Got it. There are many skills right in the behind. game that players can apply in solving problems. The engineering skill can be used to fix, disassemble, and disarm me. devices blocking the Production your line path. passes through here. And we're gonna pass through with it. So, from this point on, we're going to unlock the abilities of a high-end character to showcase some of the different mechanics we have in the game. One of the new weapon modules we now have installed is a ricochet targeting system connected to our eyes. This allows players to bounce bullets off walls and hit enemies hiding behind cover. This is another targeting system that will reveal enemies behind walls. Paired with the penetrating rounds of our tech shotgun, it's a deadly combination.
Looks like we found some loot. This is a smart gun. It's one of the more advanced weapons in the game, allowing bullets to track and follow their target. It's one of many different weapons players can acquire. Weapons are built of modules that allow for deep customization and progression. This way, you can be sure to find something that will suit your place. Oh. The toughest bastards guarding this route. Probably some reason for that. Motherfucker! Just a reminder, everything you've seen and are about to see, including this particular feature we're about to show you, is from a work-in-progress version of the game and may change over the course of development. Okay, all that shit's covered? Okay, let's try something different. We're going to take this guy down and connect directly to his neural sign. In the world of Cyberpunk, once you are jacked into a network, you have access to everything it connects to. Through this Maelstrom gang map, we've now connected to the gang hideout's internal network. This is the building's personnel system. Let's focus on the squad containing the Maelstrom ganger we just connected to. From here, we can deploy software that affects the whole squad. For now, we'll simply unlock the ability to perform quick hacks. All right, time to show off our new high-level ability. With QuickHack, using the back door we unlocked a minute ago, we'll install a virus that jams the connection between the Maelstrom Ganger and his weapon. This will prevent him from firing. Ah! Just the hell is Looks Help like he's having a problem her. now. Nice. Some of you might recognize these Mantis Blades. We can also double jump and bounce off of walls which makes us a very agile, fast solo. Sweet, we just found a corporate tech rifle. Corpo weapons are top of the line. Let's scan this guy and see what's going on. It looks like Royce is back, and he's prepped. He's got an armored exoskeleton. We won't be able to get rid of him that easily. Our weapons are not dealing a lot of damage because he's packing an autonomous shield. Luckily, the scan we performed earlier Let's revealed go. a weak spot. Ah! Attacking should bring the shield down. Shields down. Let's finish him off. Boy, it ain't going your way, you cunts. Okay, let's put him down 
and get this job over. That wasn't the smoothest raid, but we've got the bot, and Dex should be happy. But think back. What would have happened if we hadn't met with the Militech agent? Or told Royce about the agent and her plans? Or just decided to buy the bot ourselves? So many options, so many possibilities, and each will have consequences that will ripple through the game world and your story. And that's just one quest. Let's head out and finish the job. About goddamn time. Let's get out of here. You know, we really ought to work together more often. Your chip had the clap. That's not discreet. You set me up. I fucked you over, you fucked the gang over. Somewhere at the start of the story, somebody fucked the corp. See how this works now? Only the corp gets what it wants. Remember that. Learn it. Years down the line, you'll be standing where I am, watching somebody else doing- Yep, being a raging bitch to whoever's doing my dirty work for me. It's time we were on our way, Haida. Okay. Let's call Dex and tell him how things went down. My girl is shit eating suits. Mama knows. Hey, Mr. Dex. Get us that table at the afterlife? Hmm, matter of fact, I did. Just in my gut and all, you know. Well, you were right to. <laughs> well done, Mr. Me. Well done. See you there. Shit, I can't believe it, Ina. Major Leagues. We're in. <laughs> I mean, we fucking pried the door open. But the only thing I want to pry open right now is a bottle of scotch. Oh, no. Not another three-nighter. Por favor. Need to get to know this city, Jack. Not just gun in hand. I want a crusade. Amen, Ina. We finished the job. But our story is just beginning. Dex, what the fuck? Game risk it, V. And you, who are you? Uh!